This is, I think, one of the nicest and cleanest mechanical rooms we've ever set up. It's time to show you guys the mechanical room in this home we just finished up. We'll step right inside here. First off, you notice the furnace. There's so much to know about a furnace that, frankly, I just can't keep up on all the details, but that's why, why our team and our installers, we work with them super closely to make sure that we got the right system for the right application. I do know one thing for sure, though, is that little drawer down there, you pull that out and that's where the furnace filter is and you replace it per the schedule. Some of the other things to notice about furnace is there's a shutoff switch right here. You have the gas supply, in this case propane. It's important that your installer knows whether it's propane or natural gas. This is where if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you really got to be careful that you don't um, supply propane to a furnace that's set for natural gas, you can cause major problems. And rolling over to this side, we have on-demand hot water heater. We've got all kinds of plumbing and piping rolling here. The main water supply comes in from the well and it goes through the sediment filter. We got the sediment filter right here. Filter out all those all those um, small chunks of debris that come with well water. And you got the controller here. So you can actually adjust the pressure because it's a constant pressure pump down in this well. You can adjust the pressure more or less depending on what you need the application. And over here we've got the softener with the brine tank. One of the things that we really like to do in these rooms is this area right down here. We like to make sure that that's plenty deep, that our drain is recessed far enough down. We have a positive slope towards this drain. So when that regen cycle runs with the water softener, it spits out quite a bit of water. We want to make sure that water's not going anywhere. So we really take extra care here to make sure this is done right. Swinging over to this side. Ooh, first I'm going to point out this. We've got gas line coming in, propane, it's hard piped all the way to here where we have this manifold where the remainder of the propane lines run out with flex to where they need to go. And on this side we have a couple of EG4 batteries with the inverter. This is for the battery backup system and also solar. This house has four solar panels, it's got two batteries, and it's actually running quite well. The battery system here, it's not a complete off-grid house, but the batteries serve as battery backup, and you can also plug a generator directly into these to charge them um, in case of you needing a backup to the backup. You'll notice up here we have some conduits. These conduits run all the way to the roof, and it's just for future solar panel ads. If they add more solar panels to the roof, there's room and a chase in place where they can run wires all the way in. Add a couple more batteries. Right over here, two electrical panels. This one right here is the main panel. This one is the emergency loads panel. And in the emergency loads panel, it's only half full. There's room for some additional breakers or circuits. And these are just the ones that will be run if for some reason, the power goes down. It'll switch over to this emergency loads panel. Some of the ones in there, we've got the furnace, the internet, you always need internet even if power's down, right? Some of the dining room lights, we've got the wood fireplace fan just to keep that going. You can burn wood and make sure that you're circulating heat to the house. Also, the well is on this emergency loads panel, the freezer, and some garage plugs. The garage plugs, the primary reason there is so that we're running the garage door openers, keeping those powered, just for in case that it's a longer power outage and you run those batteries down in the garage door, you still have the, the opportunity to open there without having to manually open the doors. One of the things to note that inside of this panel we have an extra conduit. The conduit runs up to the attic and then we have another conduit that runs from the attic down into the crawl space. So if there's any future electrical ads in this home, 
they'll be able to snap the breakers in right here, run their wires through the conduit we prepped, and run them as, as easily as possible, I guess, to prep for to wherever in the house needs the add. All right, well, that's a tour of a recently completed mechanical room that we have here. One final note is that, just check it out. It's completely finished. We've got sheetrock on these walls because of the fire codes. We've got OSB on these other walls. It creates an awesome surface for mounting things like plumbing lines and well controllers and, you know, all that stuff. So, oh yeah, down here too. Down here, there's a little bump out in the foundation and that's so that we can run a supply and return line down into the crawl space that runs across there for the lower zone. And then we've got ductwork that punches through this sheetrock here up into the attic. It shoots across the attic and into the floor system of the second level for the upper zone. Ended up working out really, really well. This is, I think, one of the nicest and cleanest mechanical rooms we've ever set up. So if you like it, feel free to subscribe. We like that, like our video, share it, and follow us along for more tours of custom homes we're building in the Black Hills.